States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alderman Johnson here. Alderman Donovan here. Alderman Jokers here. Alderman Eidman here. Alderman Rainey here. Alderman Prince here. Alderwoman Armbruster here. Mayor, we have a few on. Very good. Thank you. I'll move for approval of the agenda. Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. All righty. Uh, takes us down to our city administrator's report. So you've got the uh, report at your seat. Did not get that done before Monday. Um, say, I know, it's heartbreaking. Uh, one thing I'll, uh, I will pass on to you that uh, we had an online webinar yesterday with Mo DNR on their ARPA money and what they'll be distributing uh, for water, sewer, stormwater, um, and lead line services. I will tell you that we are not eligible for stormwater. So if we had hoped to match some money for planning, because we're not an MS4 district or an MS4 community and we don't have a combined sewer or stormwater, we're not eligible. So we can still do water sewer. We'll look at those projects, but for stormwater, we're not going to get, not look at trying to apply because we won't be eligible. So I just thought I'd pass that on. Um, yes. Construction projects going to get underway here soon. Monday, they'll start on Parkwood. End of the month, they'll start on the water line on North 4th Street. So it's going to be a busy summer again. Uh, should take a couple of weeks on Parkwood, about two months on the water line to get it dug out, installed, and then repaved. And then we'll have Bowman's come in after that and do the paving uh, all across town, uh, different streets. And also we'll have uh, 7th Street as well to do a water line. So that'll be coming up probably eh, after school, so June. Do that in the spring. On Parkwood, there's always going to be access to those streets. Oh, you mean the side streets? Yeah, yeah. side streets. Yeah. And why you got those, those apartments for the elderly? So what you look at is it's only going to be those two panels on the east side, and then you can always do half the half the intersection so people can get in and out. Yeah. Uh, do half, let the concrete cure, and then you do the other half. Uh, so CE's done this type of work before. They'll, yeah. they're, they're good at it. They know what they're doing. What kind of cure do you use? I, nah, I, only if they use the high early. I don't think they're going to use that type of concrete. So we're probably looking at seven days. Seven days, see if we yeah, get, typical. Get, yeah, see if we get a compressive strength of about 4,000 4, pounds. What about the north right, fork? Is right. that going to be an issue for residents to access? who live on North Forest? I know we had no. a little bit of an issue last year. Uh, and, I mean, it's going to be minor issues all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no way to avoid some of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and one of the things we've talked about is is running a detour so they can close that, close sections of it for a time. But they'll always leave it open for residents. It's just that they may have, a, you know, may have to either wait or have to work their way around some signs to get to their to their home. I don't remember there being any, any consistent problems where people couldn't get in and out. It was just... Depends on if they were working in front of those houses or not. Mm -hmm. So we're communicating with them when, when that work's going to start? That's up to the contractor, but yes. Okay, thank you. That'd be on Parkwood. Could we get some signs or some, some temporary signs to kind of limit truck traffic on there while it is curing? Because there is some truck traffic, you know, ends up on that road at times. And I think it would, might be to our best interest to kind of limit that, you know, until the engineer says it's fully cured. I would... We'll see. I would think the CE would block it completely, and, and so there's no access. Uh, so nobody's driving over it. So unless they run over the signs uh, or the barricades. Right. No, I mean, after that point, you know, from vehicles to 80,000 pound trucks, there's a big difference. But I think if you open it up, you know, putting a sign up isn't going to stop anybody. I mean, they're not going to avoid it, and they're not going to know what to avoid. So. Anything else? Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Very good. Takes us to our staff reports. Uh, Kenny? Good evening, everyone. Should have a report in front of you. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to start off by welcoming our new board member. This is my first appearance in front of you. And also offer, like I do all the other aldermen that were out there every Wednesday night, if you'd like to stop by and take a tour of the facility and 
We'll show you around, tell you what we have, and explain things to you if you have any questions. Thank you. Any questions about my report? Uh, I will say something about the roof repairs. Uh, we did have three people come in and give us estimates, and what we did was we took their estimates and combined them to what we thought was a good spec. So that's how we came up with the spec. And whenever we got the spec put together and we went out for bids, I also sent emails out to the companies that gave us prior estimates and got no response from one. The other one said they were going to come and look at it and never did, and we ended up with just the one. But we do feel that that one is a good comprehensive plan because we added some things from the other ones that wasn't in the original. So we're recommending approval so we can get that thing started and get the roof taken care of. Amen. That'd be awesome. Did they give you a, an estimate when they could start? I, I haven't called them yet because I didn't want to lead into that okay. we had given them the bid or anything at that point. I would anticipate shortly, but okay. with construction being the way it is, it's hard to say. Yeah. And they are the ones that did the work or are doing work on St. Jen's School District, so they're a well-known company. Oh, yeah. And usually in the summer, they have, they're busy with schools because mm -hmm. they have to get all that done before school starts again. So that may put it off a little bit. That sounds good. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bring David up. Good evening. Good evening. Got my report there. You can see the next Heritage Commission meeting will be Monday. Uh, just a note on the building department, that demo permit that takes all of the homes that were unfortunately destroyed by fire last year, they're all addressed at this point. Um, under the comprehensive plan, I just wanted to note that um, just gave P&Z an update. Uh, they are completing the, they have completed the land use survey and are reviewing the current comp plan and demographic data and will be scheduling some uh, public outreach meetings in June or July, which is part of that uh, agenda we shared a few months back. Besides that, certainly had an uptick in nuisance complaints, um, but most of that was vegetation. Um, of the 14 you see that letters went out last week, nine have been mowed. So uh, I think the, the rain and then the quick sunshine brought a lot of grass really quickly. And uh, most of them are addressed now, though. There's a few more each day, unfortunately. That's all I got. Thanks, David. Thank you. Good evening. So you can see in the report there, we've got several things that are going on in and around the, the area, including the Living History Saturday is our underway. That's an ongoing event uh, that will be running uh, each Saturday all the way through the month of September. Uh, some of our most recent events, good turnout for those. Uh, one of those, a follow-up to the SDG Gravel Classic that was conducted on April 9th, where we had 417 participants in that event. Um, we had an opportunity to meet with uh, event organizers and some area merchants and other representatives for around the area. Uh, that was very, very uh, optimistic that uh, so many people showed up and for, for a meeting to discuss uh, what we could do going forward on this event. Um, the one day economic impact number that was shared with us for the, uh, for the event, and this is specifically for the riders and the staff members alone with a $45,000 plus impact one day on the city. Um, some of the area retailers, one of the, the things that we had hoped to achieve with that uh, particular event was uh, was residual tourism as a result of having the event. Already we've had some reports from retailers, um, museums, and a number of other entities that said that they've had people already coming back that were specifically because of the event. They, they'd never been to St. Genevieve before, but have already returned. Uh, no debt date has been set, of course, for 2023, but uh, we are looking at, at options, but uh, they would like to propose at some point in time, somewhere in that same vicinity that time of the year for, for next year. Uh, tours and groups uh, being a little more active. Some of those uh, already taking place in uh, April and May. Uh, 
three are scheduled still yet to go this month. I uh, had a good group of 40, about 45 plus uh, in town today. Uh, also uh, been reaching out to some tour directors and uh, tour owners in uh, specifically Nashville, Tennessee. And so we've already had some of the um, uh, directors that actually came here to St. Genevieve to look around, see if this was a, an opportunity where they might develop a new tour. Uh, there are some stops that are being looked at. We're, we're be part of a, uh, an ongoing tour across Missouri from that, that area. So uh, they were in town actually today to discuss um, some particulars and see for themselves. And so they're already looking at some uh, additional tours and some of those where we would be the primary destination going forward where they would, instead of been spending three to four hours, they'd actually be spending two or three days. Um, at the state level, uh, marketing grants has been announced that uh, we'll be reverting to a 50% reimbursement as opposed to the 75% that we enjoyed in the, in the last year. Uh, visitors are slightly up at uh, the Welcome Center. Um, also, uh, thanks to all the folks who are doing a lot of hard work down there, hot as it is. Uh, I think some mulch went in this morning. Uh, some of the overgrowth, vines, bushes, trees, everything's been removed, starting to clean up. Looking good, obviously, for uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, garden walk that's coming up this weekend, along with other things. Uh, National Park. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness we had no incident. When I'm happy to report that uh, when we moved the diorama, mm -hmm. that was that was fantastic. That we had a lot of manpower to help with that, um, and also uh, the repainting and uh, that will be repainting of the interior is scheduled to come because they were trying to match some paint inside, uh, but. 40-year-old paint doesn't match very well, so, uh, so they're going to do a repaint job there, and we're going to install a uh, TV monitor behind the new uh, kiosk for tourism there in the corner. Um, social media, still growing very well, uh, very solid, uh, especially proud of the uh, post reach numbers, so those continue to increase. And a few upcoming events to take note of, of course, uh, mentioned the Master Gardener's Garden Walk coming up this weekend, as well as Pioneer Days that will also be happening both of those on the 14th. Uh, Garden Walk will also be on the 15th. Uh, the Missouri Tourism Roadshow that was rescheduled from, I believe, February uh, will be here on February, or rather May 24th over at the Community Center. And of course, the Fort Toronto Arc Walk is coming up on the 27th. We did the cleanup on the old growth, the vines, trees, what have you. That was Alliance. Some of that has been kind of ongoing process of, from some of the overgrowth to what they were putting in the, the mulch there. What's our staff level in the tourism welcome center? Do we have what is our how many staff we got? It's myself and, and one part time person. Okay. One? One. Okay. Um, what's that one day uh, economic impact, that 45000 uh, where did that number come from? You said it was shared with you. It, it was shared with me from the uh, from the organizers of the event, okay. and that's based on the uh, Missouri average okay. for expenditure uh, expenditure for per person each day in the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you have questions? Pretty impressive. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Are there any, yeah. <coughs> any committee reports? Not this week. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, yes, sir. Not not this week. So I'm going to try to put you on the hook here. Did we uh, did we get follow up on the work order on that that bathroom at the whole wall? Did we did we complete a work order to repair that? Does anybody know? Ba bathroom in the parks where there was a hole in the wall. Did we complete a work order to repair that? Uh, I don't know that we have a work order on that. No. Okay, okay. We rephrase the question. We Can we get a work order? Yeah, we didn't put in a, a formal thing with it. It's been okay. there for X amount of years. Not to put it off, but. Right. Well, what, what if we what if we decided tonight we wanted to fix that? Can we do it? How, how long would it take? Is it possible? Can we fix that, that hole in the wall 
in the bathrooms up there in the park? I sent Steve a note on that, so okay. I just don't think it's been scheduled yet. Okay. All right. So yeah. it's in progress. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Takes us to uh, the other committee reports. We'll go to public comments. Dina. Please come to the podium. Um, Dina Kreiler, Chamber of Commerce Director. I just wanted to um, say thank you to um, Happy and your admin staff for hosting us for our leadership uh, group that we had here, well, I guess what was that, in April. Um, your department heads all did a great job and the group was very happy with uh, the tour and also the presentation. Um, I also want to say that we're gonna get to do, uh, I think in July we're at the firehouse um, as well for a tour for our emergency management day. And then uh, in September, we're really looking forward to uh, the park board. So we're gonna be doing, um, I got some strong strong gentlemen in this group, so we're gonna put them to work uh, in September to do, um, I think it's Valley Springs, uh, a project there. So just to let you know that we do appreciate you guys um, giving us your time, because I know it was very, very stretched. So I do appreciate that. So we are looking forward to the next couple of months to getting into some other department heads. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dina. Thank you. And just so you know, this is the time that we would have heard people if they had questions about redistricting. We had to advertise for it. We put it on the Facebook page. We put the information out there. But uh, uh, we don't have anybody that has any questions. So mm -hmm. we, I think we fulfilled that requirement or request from the board. There Are there any other, any, any other public comments? Very good. Takes us to the uh, consent agenda. I've got some questions about the street closure request for the Oktoberfest. Tara, do you think you could answer a few questions for me? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so um, I, I have gotten some inquiries about the event, so I'm probably going to go a little beyond the scope of your sure. request, if that's all right. So you have it listed as organization SG Oktoberfest. Have you? formed an actual organization? So we're, I mean, we're just a committee. We, okay. our plan is after this year to use the money that we have from the t-shirt sales and stuff this year to do a nonprofit for next year. Okay, because you're um, not we currently. We, yeah, we didn't have, there wasn't enough time basically to okay. do all the nonprofit stuff and pull off an event this year, both. Okay. So. So what, what are, how are you handling insurance, liquor license, those types of things? So. We are, we are putting out bids for insurance. We okay. just um, went to Wolf's and Farm Bureau and um, Lake Nen. Um, and then somebody else was looking at it a couple of different places too. So we will have, I mean, we, we have that in our funding for us to be able to do that. We are um, still, we have, I mean, we have a whole marketing plan as far as what we're getting, where we're getting money from and what their benefits are from doing that and being involved in the parade and all of those things. So we're pretty confident that we'll have the money that we need to do everything we need. We are, we have over almost $4,000 at this moment. Um, and that's from our sponsorships and stuff like that. And um, as far as liquor <coughs> license go, so that's what I, the conversation I had with Happy is <coughs> that we would put one beer garden on the street between merchant and market and it would be closed off for that actual beer garden and there would be music and games on the on each end of it is the idea at this moment when we see how many vendors and things we get that may have to be adapted but that's what that's kind of the plan for right now and so whose liquor license will you be using everybody will be doing their own like it will be their catering liquor license so we're um it's like jackson street brewery down in kate in prairieville they would file their own catering license for themselves to have it there okay so how does that work with us that will be coming to you in the future right. uh, to, to allow them to do that. Okay. At this point, they haven't made an application. So. Okay, because on the agenda, it says alcohol sales on Main Street. What you're approving is alcohol sales on Main Street. Okay. So what Kara was looking for was approval from the board for their insurance purposes, saying that we are allowing it on the street, as opposed to on the Lions Club Park, where they own that, or at okay. Audubon, where they own that property. So this is public property and they're looking for approval And because to then be able they to for them to get their catering license they have to have approval of the property 
in order to then get a liquor the liquor okay. license for the day. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a follow up. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. You're not Correct. approving anybody to do it. You're just approving that it can be get that you can have a beer garden blocked off and properly fenced or whatever on Main Street. And so we'll get those details in a festival application yeah. later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's also a little unusual to have a street closure request that's not specific. So I'm just sort of wondering. It was Main Street from Merchant to Washington. As of now, maybe more in future. Correct, because it's depending on how many vendors we get coming in. And so, I mean, it's the, the event is growing. Every Correct. week we're getting more and more vendors. So I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to narrow us into this only one area and then have to turn down vendors. It so says market it's, to, it says market to Washington. Yeah. Already. Sorry, that's what I meant. Did I say Merchant? Yeah. Merchant. Market to Washington, yeah. yes. That so it, it may grow and grow up Merchant or Market yeah. Street okay. would, is, would be the areas we would grow. Um, but I can't, I mean, I don't, our plan is, so we have a lion, we have the Lions Club who is hopefully gonna do food and beer. They haven't for sure said that yet. Um, if you've ever been to an Oktoberfest, it's basically a big ongoing beer garden. So we're not quite able to do that, but we have the beer and food there, walk down to Main Street, and then we have our beer and food there that's like public, and then Audubon will have their beer and food. So it'll be almost a continuous kind of beer garden. And then after Audubon's parking lot down is where the vendors will start, so. So then you would put in an amended request at some point if you want to. Correct, okay. yes. Is this Thursday night, Friday and Saturday? No, it's a Friday, Saturday, it's just Fifth, a Saturday and Sunday. 15, 16, 17. So it should just be so it's 15 the night. 7 p.m. to the 17th at 6 p.m. Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry. I had Mother's Day this past weekend um, at Audubon and just wasn't prepared for that to be crazy. So it, so it should be that Friday night at 7 p.m. for them to start setting up. Okay. And then it'll be a closed Saturday and Sunday. But still access for residents to come and go that weekend? I mean, it's, I, it's whatever Jordan Fett does. So, I mean, that's I think that's what we would request. So it would be minimal. There's not a whole lot of residents in that area. Um, but I'm, obviously we're not gonna tell somebody they can't go to their own house. <laughs> so. Well, and there's fire codes too that they have right. to abide by so that the traffic could get through. Right, so. right. You got a plan anyway. So far, it's been working. We've got 22 yeah. <laughs> booths at this moment. Um, so. yeah. <laughs> Oktoberfest start in September. And you have a plan to communicate with residents? We have, we, we did, we finalized the letter Tuesday night that should be going out to all of residents. Okay. Yep. So just a pretty long closure. I mean, it's comparable to what Jordan Fett is. Right, yeah. so. right. But that's, I mean, that's been an ongoing, that's, that's sometimes an issue too. I'll sure. That way. Sure. Especially for new residents who don't necessarily know this is the way it's always been. Sure. So it's nice to communicate with the residents. Yeah, there's, I mean, that's part of the application is that we have to contact the area. So um, we w went through all that. We're meeting every three weeks, basically from now until the event um, to get everything organized and put off, so. So in 93, we didn't have their set, so we had a, of the one in October that year, if you remember. Mm -hmm. That was on the square, wasn't it? Uh, it was pretty minimal. It wasn't very big, I remember that. I remember it clearly. Yeah. And we had a couple years, is my recollection. We've, we've gotten really great traction. I mean, I think it's gonna end up being a pretty great event, so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, can we get input we, from we both of the chiefs while they're here? Or is that is now not the time for that? Or well, they've approved the police department's already approved it. Mm -hmm. The chief, you know, he goes fire chief. They, same way with your fed, I'm sure. So, if, if I can for just a second, yeah. uh, the fire department's official stance is we're not opposed to closing streets. We just have to have enough room to get our trucks through there. So I need an eight foot minimum clearance down the center of the road. So if we have vendors on either side, we need to have some room in the middle so we can get a truck through there. Because right. we have to be within 150 foot of the house or something that burns to get our hoses off and get into the building. So we're not opposed to closing. We just need to make sure we have room. And that's one of the problems we've had with Jared Fett for years is 
they go from one side to the other side and yeah, twist our, and turn and our, islands and it's our plan is to put everybody on the east side of main yeah. street yeah, so. we, we'd be fine with that as long as we have enough room to get a truck to yeah we're gonna because part of that is we plan to have our volkswagen parade so we're putting all the vendors on one side of the street so the parade can come through oh. so Questions? Thank you. Thanks, Karen. <coughs> For me? Oh, Bob's going to make a motion. Need a motion or? for the consent agenda. Oh, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Takes us to old business. Second reading of bill number 4490, an ordinance approving a budget amendment to the city of St. Genevieve for the fiscal year 2022 budget relating to various revenue and expenditure increases. Move, please. Second. Put a roll call, please. Alderwoman Claiborne? Yes. Alderwoman Johnson? Yes. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Eidman? Yes. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderwoman Armbruster? Yes. We have eight yes votes. Bill number 4490 now becomes ordinance number 4412. Thank you. Uh, second reading of bill number 4491, an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri, amending the personnel manual as set forth below. Move approval. Second. Roll call, please. Alderwoman Tegmer? Yes. Alderwoman Johnson? Yes. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Eidman? Yes. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderwoman Armbruster? Yes. Eight yes votes, bill number 4491 now becomes ordinance number 4413. Very good. Takes us to new business, approval of the annual liquor license renewals. These are all scrutinized by the police chief, right? Mm -hmm. I guess. I, aren't they? Chief Bennett. They give us an annual rundown. Need a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Takes us to first reading of Bill Number 4492, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, amending Schedule 3, Parking Restrictions, Table 3, E, Handicap Parking, as set forth below. What was the request? Was this uh, individual came forward to make this request? Oh, that's the individual mayor. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, it was no. It, what's happening is, is there's the board issues to go through the motion to, to get somebody a, a handicapped parking spot. Well, it's issued to that to that individual, the way I understand it. So the house is sitting there. It's just there's two of them right here on Market Street. Well, the people have moved away. Mm -hmm. So there's two two handicapped parking spots out there that nobody's using right across from Valley School. So is it actually issued to the individual or to the address? It's the address. The address. The address. So. Yeah, so we're eliminating it from the addresses that you see to below. Yeah. Oh. Motion to approve. That's a good idea. And Valley, oh, does, pardon me? Sorry, Valley doesn't need those parking spaces for their, or? No, it's on the, uh, it's on the other side of the across room. from Valley. I, parking is always, it probably, it would be beneficial for Valley to, to have them. They, they would be able to park out there too. And both of those residents there have off-street parking too. So, so it's okay. And if Valley needed a handicap spot, they would have to come to the board and apply for it. So, this is just eliminating the the residents. Yeah. There, I have a motion and a second, don't I? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You got that down. So. Okay. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, it takes us to uh, the bill number 4493, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to accept a contract proposal with uh, Miners Hagen Roofing and Sheet Metal LLC of Farmington, Missouri for the firehouse roof repair project in the amount of $11,400. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Motive. for a second reading. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second reading of bill number 4493, an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to accept a contract proposal with Miners, Miners Hagen 
Roofing and Sheet Metal LLC of Farmington, Missouri for the Firehouse Roof Repair Project the amount of, in the amount of $11,400. Motion to approve. Second. For roll call, please. Alderwoman Clayhorn. Yes. Alderwoman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Jokers. Yes. Alderman Eidman. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderwoman Armbruster. Yes. Eight yes votes. Bill number 4493 now becomes ordinance number 4414. Thank you. So it takes us to bill number 4494. An ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri authorizing the city administrator to sign a special warranty deed to transfer ownership of 59.60 acres along Progress Parkway to the St. Genevieve Catholic, St. Genevieve County Catholic Church Real Estate Corporation. I do have a question about this. Um, so how does it take place that they give us their property? They'll have their own special warranty deed that, we'll, that they'll sign off on and we'll sign off as well. It'll match what you actually have in front of you. Right. Uh, we, we coordinated with them, and that was where we copied that special warranty deed from. Yeah. Uh, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion for a second reading of second. bill number. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Uh, so I have all in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Okay. Second reading of bill number 4494, an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing the city administrator to sign a special warranty deed to transfer ownership of 59.60 acres along Progress Parkway to the St. Genevieve County Catholic Church Real Estate Corporation. Second. Roll call, please. Alderwoman Clayton. Yes. Yes. Alderman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Jokers. Yes. Alderman Eidman. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderwoman Armbruster. Yes. Eight yes votes. Bill number 4494 now becomes ordinance number 4415. Thank you. Is there any other business? If there's no other business, this meeting is adjourned.